quartz versus quartzite. There's a lot of confusion in our group about the difference between the two. Uh, one is a mineral, one is a rock. For a geologist, it's a huge difference. But when you're looking at the samples in the field, if you're taking a look at a, uh, a rock, you can't tell the difference. It's not always obvious. I'm going to talk to you about the difference between them, and at least in the more obvious cases, make it easier for you to identify them. All right. First of all, let's talk about what quartzite isn't. If you Google quartzite, you're going to come back with countertops, probably. Quartzite countertops are very popular, and it tells you quartzite is an artificial rock. Well, that may be true for countertops. It's not true for the actual rocks that you're finding out on the beaches or, or in the field. All right. Quartzite is an actual natural stone. Countertop may be fake. Who knows? Uh, but quartz is a mineral. Quartzite is a rock. First of all, minerals. Minerals are the constituents of rocks. They're the base. So if we were to compare it to atoms and molecules, Minerals are the atoms, right? They're the building blocks, and molecules are made out of atoms. Rocks are made out of minerals. So you cannot have a rock that's just one giant crystal, because then that's just a mineral, it's a crystal. However, if you got a whole bunch of these little crystals and minerals together, there you go, you have a rock. So quartz has a very simple chemical formula. SiO2. And it's really kind of the basis for most of the geology we see on the planet, in fact. It is one of the most common substances, probably the most common substance in the Earth's crust. And quartzite, and quartzite is made out of lots and lots of quartz crystals. And that's really the difference. The way quartzite forms is it's a, a metamorphic rock. It actually starts off as a sandstone. Sandstones are mostly made out of quartz grains. Quartz sand is by far the most common. And what happens is you get a uh, sandstone. We're going to zoom way in on this. It has got tons of sand grains all over it. Just made entirely out of sand grains that are just cemented together with usually more quartz, sometimes it's calcite. And what happens is that it gets buried and it gets cooked at very high heat and even more importantly, very high pressure. What happens is that the boundaries between the sand grains that are all pressed against each other begin to almost dissolve in a sense, they fuse. And so you end up with these grains that are starting to have their boundaries disappear. And so what you kind of end up with when it's all said and done is a rock that when you zoom in on it, it's made out of quartz grains, but those quartz grains can kind of look all wobbly like this and you can still kind of see that this rock that's mostly made out of quartz is composed of these quartz grains that used to be sand grains however those boundaries have fused and they've grown together they've intergrown and you've gotten a, you've gotten a quartzite there quartzites can come in lots of colors uh, they're usually white usually kind of a milky color but you can get pink ones, purple ones, you can even get greens and blues, which are really cool to find. I really enjoy finding those. Hard to find those, but when you find them, it's super neat. Let's take a quick look at a couple of examples over here. We'll start out at my uh, cabinet of wonders here. I've got here your classic quartz crystal. All right, you've got this hexagonal crystal shape. You've got the prism on the top. Beautiful. And when you shine light through it, you'll see that it transmits the light very, very well. The light just goes right through it. And the reason is because it's got a very uh, well-ordered 
crystal lattice structure. So it transmits light really easily. If we take a look at uh, another piece here, there we go. You can ignore the, the beautiful black tourmaline on it, but again, a very glassy piece. This is a piece of uh, quartz from a quartz vein here. And again, it transmits the light very well through it. Now we come over here and we take a look at this. You can hardness test it and see that, yes, it's definitely quartz. And it does transmit light, but definitely not as well as the other stuff did. It's really getting diffused in there. And if we zoom in on this over here, let me bring it over to really good lightning over here. If you zoom way in on it, you'll hopefully be able to see those fused quartz grains I was talking about, all right? You can see that it's not truly a sandstone. But it used to be. Those quartz grains have really grown together. I can find you a sandstone to look at here real briefly. The kind of thing that this would have evolved from. Up here we have a piece of Stevensville sandstone. This is a special piece. This is uh, over one billion years old. Very red because it has a lot of iron content in it. And one of the reasons this rock is so special is because it still has the old mud cracks. One billion year old mud cracks still preserved in it. Pretty awesome. If we look at the side here, I don't know if we'll need the flashlight for this or not. I'll get it just in case. Mm. It's very sandy there. So this is a very fine grain sandstone. So the sand grains don't just jump out at you, but if you get real close, you can see the sand grains in there. And they're definitely individual sand grains. If you run your finger along it, in fact, you can get a little bit of sand on your finger. However, if we go back to this piece over here, I want to be gentle with this, I don't want to abuse it. If we go back to this piece here, you can see you rub your finger against that, against that you're not getting sand grains off of it. Those sand grains have all fused together. Also, one thing to notice is these uh, are these pink stripes going across it. You can still see the old sedimentary layers of this sandstone. It used to have a white layer here and a more red layer here and a more red layer there. So this was a layered sandstone previously. You can still see the, that sedimentary layering preserved. So we got one right here. There's a lot of dirt on this and algae, moss, whatever. But let's have a look over here. So quartzite is incredibly white. That's pretty common for quartzites. It's not necessary, but quartzites are usually light colored. If we get in real close here, you'll see that it has a rather grainy texture. Now you don't see individual sand grains in there like you would for a sandstone, but you can see it's still kind of this slightly grainy texture. And the reason for that is that this was once a sandstone and those sand grains partially fused together. So it hasn't become one block of seamless glassy quartz. However, it's not just a big pile of sand grains like you get in a sandstone, it's something in between, which is why quartzites tend to be kind of milky colored, not a smooth milky color like you get with uh, chalcedony or some other minerals, but just kind of this opaque, can't see through it, kind of feel like you almost should be able to see through it, but you definitely can't. It's because all of those partially fused quartz grains are all catching the light and reflecting it in different directions. So the light just can't make its way through there. Got another piece over here. Let's see how easy this is to dig out. This one actually looks like it's a slightly higher grade quartzite. Again, it's that kind of milky white color. You can see it's a little bit glassier looking than the other one. But if you get up real close, you can still see that it's made up of these partially fused quartz grains all 
over the place. These are pieces here, and this is where it gets a little tricky, where I'm not entirely sure if this is quartzite or if it's vein quartz, because quartzite, as it gets really uh, well developed, becomes uh, more and more fused, and more and more you lose those uh, fused quartz boundaries. All right, and so it gets real tricky. This one has this very sharp boundary right here, this very smooth surface, which makes me think that it think that it's probably a quartz vein. However, it's pretty poor at transmitting light. So it could be a quartzite. Not entirely sure. It becomes a little bit tricky in some of these. Here's a polished piece. It transmits light pretty well. But if you look up here, we get real close. When we're transmitting light through there, you can still see those fused quartz grain boundaries inside. It tells you that this is still a quartzite here. Let's see if we can have a look there. I have another piece here that might show it better. This is another polished quartz. I, I've never polished a stone myself, but the, the beaches tend to do that for you. If we have a look here, you can see a lot of these old grain boundaries still preserved in that rock. So quartzite, made of quartz grains that are fused together that used to be a sandstone. Just like so. And quartz is just a large single crystal of the mineral. When I say large, it could be any size, but if you have a question about whether this is a piece of quartz or quartzite, you either have a very large quartz crystal or you have a large piece of vein quartz, or you've got a quartzite. All right, and this is what you're looking for. You're looking for these fused grains.